For the last two weeks, I've been traveling across Western Canada, going from the Great Plains, over the Rocky Mountains, and into the mighty coastal forests of the Pacific Northwest. To say that what I seen was shocking would be an understatement. I seen drought, I seen smoke, I seen fires, and I seen more drought, and more fires, and more smoke. I seen bone dry swampland, dried up water holes, dehydrated cattle sweltering in the heat of the now arid Great Plains. I spoke with locals along the way who shared their perspectives of these unprecedented events. This adventure convinced me more than ever before that times are changing and they're changing fast. And the scary part is, this is only the tip of the iceberg. The time to prepare for the future is now. Let's talk about it. So I had to come out to Southern BC to see for myself what was going on here. And I was astonished at what I found. As you can see behind me, that's not uh, fog, that is smoke from forest fires. Most people aren't spending a lot of time outdoors. I wanted to show you guys this firsthand. I came from a place called Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and which is about 1500 kilometers away. And I can tell you that from North Ontario to the west coast, it's been nothing but smoke, fire, droughts, uh, cows huddled around, dwindling water holes, the whole way here. Just yellow fields and not the nice grain type yellow, but just bone dry fields. I've never seen anything like this. I've talked to a few locals. Many of them have never seen anything like this. They've seen forest fire smoke because BC is notorious for fires, but nothing this persistent. Never have they seen these types of record temperatures, never have they seen the level of drought. People who are avid outdoors people and hikers can't go out for long periods of time because the smoke inhalation is just wears on your lungs, okay? It's already a high altitude environment here, so it's low oxygen. You add on top of that smoke from wildfires, these carcinogens, and it just makes it a lot worse. I figured I would head to the west coast and visit Canada's only temperate rainforest in search of a place that had a normal amount of precipitation. I was stunned by what I found. So I'm just out here on Vancouver Island and it is astonishingly bone dry. You can see the, the ground, everything is just dead and including some of the trees because there's a lot of beetle kill in these parts. The beetle kill is part of the reason why we're seeing these abnormally large amounts of wildfires and why it's going to continue to get a lot worse. Uh, this is the driest that a lot of people have ever seen it on the island and I've talked to a lot of uh, older folks and they can attest to that, that it is unseasonably and abnormally and exceptionally dry. There's an extreme risk of fire right now. It's just astonishing that this temperate rainforest is as dry as it is. It's very strange. Most places are on an extreme fire warning, fire ban, and as you can see here the grass is all yellow. Not much is growing. There hasn't been really a whole lot of rain at all out here as far as I'm told. And it's really depressing seeing all of these cows along the way here huddled along these empty water holes what is typically uh, a swampland with a high water table, you know, from where I live to like the Alberta border from Saskatoon to Alberta, usually there's a lot of water, but it's just bone dry. All you see is white residue where ponds and creeks used to be. It's something I've never seen before. It's, it's pretty scary to be honest. And then driving out to BC to see the thickness of the smoke and just how persistent it was. Like it didn't matter where you went. I mean, maybe up north you might find a little bit of relief, which is odd because there usually is a lot of forest fires up that way too. Down here, it's just been so persistent. I was talking to locals in Kamloops who said it was like this for the past three weeks to four weeks and that this is the worst that they've seen it so far. So it's pretty serious, pretty serious what's going on right now. And then the other problem is, is wa watching farmers trying to irrigate these crops when there's no sun coming in. Okay, but it's still really, really hot, which is weird. So it's almost like the heat 
uh, that the smoke is kind of trapping in the heat, but it's also reflecting some of the sun's light off. So it's probably the smoke is actually having an effect of cooling things down. Unfortunately, the plants aren't getting enough uh, sunlight to photosynthesize. So you just can't win. You're, you're gonna have uh, really shitty crops this year all the way in Western Canada, I think. And that is going to increase food prices a lot, I do believe. So hopefully three months ago when I initially put out that video warning people about drought, that people took that seriously and went and filled up your pantry. That's why I've been so adamant on food preps lately because I do believe that we could see a significant spike in food price, which is not gonna be temporary. It's not gonna be transitional. It is going to be permanent. I'll also say that this is one of the first seasons that I haven't really had to use much bug spray out in the back country. And more often than not, you're using a lot of bug spray out here, but because it's been so dry, there hasn't been enough bugs to justify it. You know, you see the odd horse fly here and there, maybe the odd mosquito at a tourist area where, you know, mos mosquitoes tend to congregate, but nothing major. And you can see all this grass around me here. I'll show you an image of it. It's, it's bone dry and it's, it's very freaky. It's very freaky to see this right now. Lots of these forests, they got a lot of standing dead timber because of the pine beetle kill. And if not that, they're just dry. There is a lot of old dead growth and the, they're just waiting to go up. One of the scariest things about these kind of fires, and I didn't realize this until I got out here, is that if new fires are starting, you can't really see it because visibility is so impaired whether from the sky or on the road, you know, you could have a fire starting just a hundred meters into the bush and you wouldn't really be able to tell because you can't see the smoke rising, okay? You have to be really close to see the smoke. That's why these fires are so hard to fight, especially if you get a little fog on top of the smoke, it becomes very hard to pinpoint where the actual fires are. So. Uh, just keep that in mind when you see these fires on TV and people trying to fight these fires, it is very difficult to really identify the source of the fire without some sort of thermal imaging technology. A lot of this reminds me of the book called The Road. They made a movie about it also. The movie starts out, they don't tell you what disaster uh, precipitated the post-apocalyptic event that the characters suddenly find themselves in. They don't tell you what happened. Is it a volcano? Is it a meteor? Is it nuclear winter? Is it climate change? They don't really tell you, okay? The only hints they provide are basically at the beginning where the guy opens up his back window and he sees that, you know, the forest behind him is ablaze. It's on fire. And it makes me wonder that if this is going to continue year after year, and if there's a component of it that is not cyclical and if there's part of this which is going to continue to intensify like a positive feedback loop where it's going to get drier and drier thus you're going to get more forest fires because it's going to be more dry and because it's getting dry and the moisture is not being held in the soil that it's going to get hotter and hotter and all of these things are going to continue to to play on each other is it going to get worse and worse to a point where the habitat just can no longer support life. I mean, yes, there's so many things that we can do, right? We can truck in water, we can terraform to a certain extent, so long as there's rivers that are going to allow us to effectively agriculturally terraform. But what if these things just run out? Something else that was quite foreboding and, and sad on this trip was seeing most of Canada come out to BC. It seems like that's where everybody's vacationing this year because nobody wants to be hassled at the border, you know, coming back in for quarantine. Are you sick? Are you that? Have you had the test? Have you had the jab? Whatever. People are just opting to go and travel within Canada and the best place to go is somewhere on the west coast in BC because that's like as close as we're going to get to the tropics in this country. And just to see the, the cluster, you know what, in these small towns, gas shortages, and everybody out coming out here for this, for this smoke-filled carcinogenic cesspool, it's, it's kind of sad, you know, and it's scary in a way too, to see everybody just doing whatever they can to try to get some last little bit of pleasure before the whole 
thing collapses, it seems. That, that's the sense I get. It's because of the pandemic, you know, everybody's been so cooped up for so long that they would rather come out to this, this really thick smoke, and it's getting hard for me to breathe out here, so I'm gonna have to pack it in pretty soon here. And it's hard on the eyes too. And I know some people are gonna say, well, why aren't you wearing a mask? It's hard to do a video with a mask on, okay? But I'm gonna overlay some footage for you guys and just show you what we're working with here. It's incredible. I, I've never seen anything like this before. I never thought that this could come so quickly. I used to tree plant around Canada. I've seen forest fires. I've been in the thick of it during forest fire season and I've never seen it this thick, this dense, this persistent, this year after year ongoing. And people talk about breaking records, but I don't even think we've seen anything yet. What you need to understand is that there's a lot of forest, okay? There's a lot of forest that hasn't been burned. So some people will think, oh, well, it's just gonna be this year and that's gonna be it. We could get biblical flooding next year, okay? But what you need to understand is that there's a lot of forest left to burn, a lot. Like 99% of it has yet to be burnt. And I think the biggest fires that are gonna happen haven't happened yet. So I know some people think that maybe the worst is behind in California and all these places. I don't think so. I think the worst is yet to come. There's a lot left to burn. And for that reason, I am very reluctant now more than ever to purchase a property in this region. There's an allure to purchase property in this region because you get mild to a moderate climate year round. You're gonna get some of the warmest climates you're gonna see in Canada and Southern BC. And it's probably one of the most livable places because you can grow all kinds of fruits and vegetables. There's a nice long growing season and you can pretty much have everything. You know, there's great hunting, all that kind of stuff. But the problem is you're always gonna be in a forest fire prone region. I mean, Kamloops, big city with over 100,000 people, was almost evacuated, okay? Because a fire almost uh, jumped a river. You need to really be mindful of where you're setting up shop. This idea of running off into the backwoods and you're gonna be safe and there's not gonna be any hazards. A forest fire is going to be an increasing problem, which I think is just gonna be factoring into everybody's prepping plans, no matter where you live. If it's in Appalachia or the Rocky Mountains or anywhere in the boreal forest, it's gonna be a problem. So I'm just saying, if you do have a property, you obviously know that property better than me, you know what the risks are. But if I was going to make a property in a region like this, I would absolutely make sure that I wasn't exposed to a lot of uh, wooded area. And then I had a healthy buffer zone of grassland, which was managed and curated so that it itself could not become inflamed. Because all this grassland that you're seeing right now is a tinder box in itself. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I've never witnessed anything like this in my life. To see it on the news is, is one thing, but to see it firsthand just confirms all of the videos that I've been making so far this year. There never in the history of prepping has been a time like there is right now to prepare. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you are on. It doesn't even matter what you think is causing all of this. To be brutally honest, you just need to prepare for what the potential outcomes are gonna be. Because one day it's gonna occur to a lot of people that things aren't going back to normal. And those who are going to be able to survive this and thrive in this new world are the ones who are going to be able to adjust their life accordingly and adapt. I gotta get the hell out of here because I'm actually worried that there might be a fire brewing around here somewhere. So take care guys. If this video gets uploaded, you'll know that I made it out alive. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.